My name is Zach Harden, and we're the Alton Yeager Guard. We're based in Alton, Illinois. We represent Company A of the 9th Illinois. They were called the Alton Yeager Guard. They were German and Swiss immigrants. In 61, Abraham Lincoln requested 75,000 volunteers, and the Yeagers immediately left Alton. They went to Springfield. Um, they were one of the first companies that was mustered into the Union Army. And the Jaegers during the war were famous among the, the units in the West, so it was kind of a no-brainer on who to represent. Alton's got so much history. Everybody around Alton knows that there was stuff that happened in the Civil War. Everybody knows about Elijah P. Lovejoy, but this isn't something that people really knew about. And we just thought that it was a good opportunity, more or less, to kind of address Civil War in Alton. I've always liked history, but Civil War um, really was interesting to me because of how they organized units based on where guys were from. So it's really neat to be able to, to look back at a specific unit, for example, and, and know that they would have walked on the same brick street, you know, that I'm walking on. The Memorial Day Parade was actually started in 1868 by Civil War veterans. Um, the, the purpose of it initially, they wanted to lay flowers at what's now the National Cemetery, and then they walked all the way up to the cemetery we're at now and laid flowers here. So when we decided that we were gonna do the parade, we knew we had to lay flowers. The parade is, is kind of the, the biggest thing that we look forward to every year. We essentially live the life for a weekend. We do some reenactments, but we prefer to do living histories through the National Park Service. With reenactments, that's typically what you think of when you know, you've got a bunch of guys on either side and they kind of shoot at each other. Living histories is, is more where you get a smaller group and you'll focus on one specific thing or one place. We just, we go out, we camp, the public comes out, we talk to them, we teach them about the uniforms, the equipment, a little bit of the history of the battle, a lot of the personal stuff with the soldiers. I think that's, that's probably the main draw for a lot of guys. So during the Civil War, each company of 100 men would have been assigned two musicians. They wanted it to be a fifer and a drummer. Their purpose was a strictly military purpose. Based on the beat that they would play, it would tell the soldiers what commands meant so that units on the battlefield could hear because when you have cannons and gunfire, believe it or not, you can hear a fife. So you would hear the fifers, the fifers would play an order, and then the troops would move based on that order. And then typically on the march, they would put all of the musicians together to, to make a makeshift band, and they called it field music. Um, and then they would play songs while on the march. Some reenactors will usually, they'll go to an event, they'll have just their battle reenactment and other things. They don't usually do too much for like the actual camp life of what soldiers use. The good thing about the Jaegers and a lot of the campaigners is they actually utilize us as field musicians to be their alarm clock. They have us play Reveille in the morning to get them up. We play Tattoo at the end of the day to put them to bed. We play lunch, practice and dinner call, and we'll play assembly and other things like that. But a lot of people don't get to see in modern reenactments is how soldiers' lives were controlled by the field music. We are their alarm clock and we tell them when to do everything with music. I remember the, the first year we did the parade, you know, we, we had a lot of shocked faces. I mean, nobody had seen anything like that. And that was great. But what was even more great was today when we're marching and we're hearing people say, hey, it's the Alton Jaegers, you know what I mean? It's, we're, we, we heard it all along the route. You know, we get great support. The first year we did this, we wanted to lay flowers at the National Cemetery on the, the graves of the Civil War soldiers. As soon as we finish the parade every year, we, we go down there and we lay uh, about 300 flowers. I think honestly that's that's probably the biggest thing for most of the guys is, is just trying to, to kind of keep this alive, keep their memory alive. It's Memorial Day. Marching in a parade and talking about guys that went through stuff we can't imagine, it seems kind of like the least we can do.